Okay, this is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about statics, CE 2301. We're in chapter 8. We're dealing with moment of inertias, products of inertia, centroidal axes. And uh, first thing before we even start this, we got to note that for any axis system, we're so used to dealing with an XY axis system that we need to realize there's an infinite number of other axes system. The minimum moment of inertia is the centroidal moment of inertia because of the parallel axis theorem, which states that the moment of inertia about any axis, say X, is equal to the centroidal moment of inertia plus the AD squared term. So the minimum is going to be the centroidal moment of inertia. And we're always going to have, if we move the axis anyplace else away from the centroid, we're going to have the D square, AD squared term in there. Another thing that we need to note is that as the axes are rotated, if we keep the origin at the same point and just rotate them, the moment of inertias and the product of inertia will vary because these, the centroidal moment about a rotated axis system will vary and the uh, AD squared terms will vary. So, the book shows this example and we need to get good at this kind of geometry as we further our careers in engineering. If I have a given little coordinate area at a certain coordinate XY on the XY axis system and I rotate that axis system by an angle theta to these blue new axes U, U and V then by geometry in these two triangles, green triangles that I've kind of shaded in you can see that the new coordinates in the UV coordinate system are U is equal to X cosine theta where X, this little triangle right here X is that distance, theta is there so part of that distance is that length of that triangle x cosine theta plus this length right here which is based on this other triangle which is the height y the hypotenuse right here times the sine of that angle the opposite leg of that angle, that triangle is y sine theta so u is equal to x cosine theta plus y sine of theta that's this u dimension kind of gets all jumbled together. Look in the book for a really clearer picture. V, the dimension V right here is Y cosine of theta this adjacent leg of this little triangle here minus X sine theta which is my writing is small but that's that dimension there so V is Y cosine theta minus x sine of theta. Okay, so I can try that out. It works for any um, angle of rotation. For x and y is equal to 8 and 6. That's the coordinates start with. And I say at my angle of rotation is 30 degrees. Then u is equal to 8 cosine 30 plus 6 sine 30, 9.93 inches. v is just plug and chug, 1.20 inches. That's kind of what I have here, almost a 30 degree angle maybe. And you can see that U is like more than that X distance of 8 starts out as. And uh, V is just a little bit above the U axis, so it's like 1.2 inches. See, I start with the same coordinates and I rotate it by 60 degrees. I've kind of dashed in that maybe what's like a 60 degree angle. And I get plug and chug, U is equal to 9.20 inches, which looks about right if this is the U axis up here. V, I've now rotated the U beyond, the U axis beyond this point, so V becomes negative, negative 3.93 inches. And you can see that looks about right by eyeballing it. Okay, so we have that start off with that derivation of how we can figure out the coordinates in any rotated axis system given the original coordinates. 
the, the textbook does the math, and first they derive what's called the single angle formulas. And that uses this angle theta and gives you a number for this moment of inertia about the u-axis and about the v-axis and the product of inertia about the uv coordinate system. Then the book does some more math and shows it and does some substitutions and you come up with this formula these three formulas which we call the double angle formulas because they double the angle in all these calculations and so the moment of inertia about the u-axis is this formula ixy plus ix plus iy divided by two you can see it there learn it it's this product this component plus this part minus the ixy the product of inertia sine two times the theta angle of rotation IV looks very similar, same components, but except this time it's minus the second part and plus the third part. And the product of inertia, UV, is this number, IX minus IY over 2 times the sine of 2 theta plus IXY product of inertia cosine of 2 theta. So these are very important formulas that we're going to use a lot in our engineering career and it behooves us to just about memorize those or at least be very familiar with them. These two are the same terms just with the signs reversed for this one minus instead of plus and plus instead of minus. Let's do a quick example of a 3 by 4 rectangle oriented like this we're taking moments of inertia. We want these givens. We're going to be giving you a theta. We want to figure out what Ix and Iy and I, product of inertia Ixy are. For a rectangle, Ix about its base is bh cubed over 3. So that's 3 times 4 cubed over 3 is 64 cubic, I mean, inches to the fourth. Iy is 4 times 3 cubed over 3 oriented 90 degrees from that, 36 inches to the fourth. The product of inertia, remember we're going to use the parallel axis theorem a lot and you need to ingrain this in your brain. That's equal to the product of inertia about its own centroid plus the A dx dy term, the area times the distance y and x to the centroid, to the axes of that we're taking product of inertia about. Remember that if the if any axis is symmetric is a symmetric axis for product of inertia that product of inertia goes to zero so because both axes in this case x and x prime and y prime are axis of symmetry this number in the parallel axis theorem goes to zero so I'm left with the a dx y dx dy term the area is 3 by 4, 12 square inches, times the distance from the centroid of the area to the axis I'm taking product of inertia about, 1.5 for the x dx, which is half the width, times 2, which is half of the height, the distance to the uh, x-axis, so I get 36 inches to the fourth. Now it's just plug and chug. If I'm given that the angle of rotation is 40 degrees, theta. Then it's just plug all these numbers in here into these formulas up here and I get something that looks like that plus that term which ends up to be 28 divided by 2 or 14 times the cosine of 2 times the angle of rotation which is 80 minus the product of inertia times the sine of 2 times theta. 80 degrees. I'm just using these formulas up here, plugging the numbers in. I get 50 plus 2.43 minus 35.45 is equal to 16.98 inches to the fourth is the moment of inertia about the U axis, the rotated U axis. IV, just these same terms with the signs reversed, so it's 50 minus 2.43 plus 35.45 is 83.02 inches to the fourth. 
The product of inertia, UV, is this number, 64 minus 36 over 2, times the sine of 80, just plugging into this formula, plus 36 cosine of 80, works out to be 1379 plus 625 is 20.04 inches to the fourth. So, first thing I want to look at is, do these numbers make sense? Remembering that the basic thing about the product, moment of inertia, it's the spread of an area. The more spread out it is, when consideration of the axis that you're looking at, the bigger that moment of inertia is going to be. And so, IU for this tri for this rectangle, it IU the U axis runs right through the area. So the spread is not very big. We got part of it above, part of it below. It's kind of bunched around the U axis. So it's IU moment of inertia about the U axis is smaller than uh, either one of these IX or IY numbers because it's more focused on that axis. On the other hand, IV, all it has is a little corner touching the V axis and so it's considerably spread even further than it was about the Y or the X axis than it is about the, it's more spread about the V axis. So the v, IV is much larger than either the IX or the IY. So that makes sense. I like those numbers. They just make common sense. And the final thing I want to look at is this very interesting concept that if you add these two formulas together, IU and IV, you get IX plus IY. And that's what I'm showing right here. IX plus IY is equal to IU plus IV. 64 plus 36 is 100. 16.98 plus 83.02 is 100. So that works out.